Hello Dragon Wisps, welcome to today's video. Today is day 20 of the Dragon Whisper ASMR Advent Calendar, in which we will be finishing stave 1 of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, and we're joined by the rain. It was a very low fire indeed, nothing on such a bitter night. He was obliged to sit close to it and brood over it before he could extract the least sensation of warmth from such a handful of fuel. The fireplace was an old one, built by some Dutch merchant long ago, and paved all round with quaint Dutch tiles designed to illustrate the scriptures. There were Cain and Abel, Pharaoh's daughters, queens of Sheba, angelic messengers descending through the air on clouds like feather beds, Abraham's, Belshazzar's, apostles putting off to sea in butter boats, hundreds of figures to attract his thoughts, and yet that face of Marley, seven years dead, came like the ancient prophet's rod and swallowed up the whole. If each smooth tile had been a blank at first, with power to shape some picture on its surface from the disjointed fragments of his thoughts, there would have been a copy of old Marley's head on every one. Humbug, said Scrooge, and walked across the room. After several turns, he sat down again. As he threw his head back in the chair, his glance happened to rest upon a bell, a disused bell, that hung in the room, and communicated for some purpose now forgotten with the chamber in the highest story of the building. It was with great astonishment, and with a strange, inexplicable dread, that as he looked, he saw this bell begin to swing. It swung so softly in the outset that it scarcely made a sound, but soon it rang out loudly, and so did every bell in the house. This might have lasted half a minute or, or a minute, but it seemed like an hour. The bells ceased as they had begun together. They were succeeded by a clanking noise, deep down below, as if some person were dragging a heavy chain over the casks in the wine merchant's cellar. Scrooge then remembered to have heard that ghosts in haunted houses were described as dragging chains. <clears throat> the cellar door flew open with a booming sound, and then he heard the noise much louder on the floors below, then coming up the stairs, then coming straight towards his door. It's humbug still, said Scrooge. I, I won't believe it. His color changed, though, that when, without a pause, it came on through the heavy door and passed into the room before his eyes. Upon its coming in, the dying flame leaped up as though it cried, I know him, Marley's ghost, and fell again. The same face, the very same, Marley in his pigtail, usual waistcoat, tights and boots, the tassels on the ladder bristling, like his pigtail and his coat skirts, and the hair upon his head. The chain he drew was clasped about the middle, about his middle. It was long and wound about him like a tail, and it was made, for Scrooge observed it closely, of cash boxes, keys, padlocks, ledgers, deeds, and heavy purses wrought in steel. His body was transparent, so that Scrooge, observing him, and looking through his waistcoat, could see the two buttons on his coat behind. Scrooge had often heard it said that Marley had no bowels, but he had never believed it until now. Nor did he believe it even now, though he looked the phantom through and through and saw it standing before him, though he felt the chilling influence of its death-cold eyes, and marked the very texture of the folded kerchief bound about its head and chin, which, wrapper he had not observed before, he was still incredulous, and fought against his, his senses. Hey, how now, said Scrooge, caustic and cold as ever, what do you want with me? Much, Marley's voice, no doubt about it. Who are you? Ask me who I was. Who were you then? Said Scrooge, raising his voice. You're particular for a shade. He was going to say to a shade, but substituted this as more appropriate. In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Can you... Can you sit down, said Scrooge, looking doubtfully at him. I can. Do it then. Scrooge asked the question, 
because he didn't know whether a ghost so transparent could find himself in a condition to take a chair, and felt that in the event of its being impossible, it might involve the necessity of an embarrassing explanation. But the ghost sat down on the opposite side of the fireplace, as if he were quite used to it. "'You don't believe in me,' observed the ghost. "'I don't,' said Scrooge. "'What evidence would you have of my reality beyond that of your senses?' "'I don't know,' said Scrooge. "'Why do you doubt your senses?' "'Because,' said Scrooge, "'a little thing affects them. "'A slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheats. "'You may be an undigested bit of beef, "'a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, "'a fragment of an underdone potato. "'There's more of gravy than of grave of you. "'Whatever you are.' "'Scrooge was not much in the habit of cracking jokes, "'nor did he feel in his heart by any means waggish then. "'The truth is that he tried to be smart.' as a means of distracting his own attention and keeping down his terror, terror, for the specter's voice had disturbed the very marrow in his bones, to sit staring at those fixed glazed eyes in silence for a moment would play, Scrooge felt, the very deuce with him. There was something very awful, too, in the specter's being provided with an infernal atmosphere of its own. Scrooge could not feel it himself, but this was clearly the case, for though the ghost sat perfectly motionless, its hair and skirts and tassels were still agitated as by the hot vapor from an oven. "'You see this toothpick?' said Scrooge, returning quickly to the charge, for the reason just assigned, and wishing, though it were only for a second, to divert the vision's stony gaze from himself." "'I do,' replied the ghost. "'You are not looking at it,' said Scrooge. "'But I see it,' said the ghost, notwithstanding. "'Well,' returned Scrooge, "'I have but to swallow this and be for the rest of my days "'persecuted by a legion of goblins, all of my own creations. "'Humbug, I tell you, humbug.' "'At this the spirit raised a frightful cry "'and shook its chain with such a dismal and appalling noise "'that Scrooge held on tight to his chair "'to save himself from falling in a, in a swoon.' But how much greater was his horror when the phantom taking off the bandage around its head, as if it were too warm to wear indoors, its lower jaw dropped down upon its breast. Scrooge fell upon his knees and clasped his hands before his face. Mercy, he said, dreadful apparition, why do you trouble me? Man of the worldly mind, replied the ghost, do you believe in me or not? I do, said Scrooge, I must. But why do spirits walk the earth, and why do they come for me? It is required of every man, the ghost returned, that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men, and travel far and wide, and if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. It is doomed to wander through the world, oh, woe is me, and witness what it cannot share, but might have shared on earth, in termed happiness. Again the specter raised a cry, and shook its chain, and wrung its shadowy hands. You are fettered, said Scrooge, trembling. Tell me why. I wear the chain I forged in life, replied the ghost. I made it link by link and yard by yard. I girded it of my own free will, and of my own free will I wore it. As it's, is its pattern strange to you? Scrooge trembled at more and more. Or would you know, pursued the ghost, the weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself? It was full and as heavy and as long as this seven Christmas Eves ago. You have labored on it since. It is a ponderous chain. Scrooge glanced about him on the floor in the expectation of finding himself surrounded by some fifty or sixty fathoms of iron cable. But he could see nothing. All right, well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish the first uh, stave or chapter of Christmas Carol, so I'm going to have to do it in tomorrow's video. So uh, feel free to join me for day 21 of the Dragon Whisper ASMR Advent Calendar, where we will for sure be finishing stave one of Christmas Carol. Thank you for joining me, and as always, have a peaceful day. Bye.